Yeah, man. BSC Ziggy, man. And I just jumped off the porch with Dirty Glove Bouncer, man. Let's get it. How he hop off Delta flight when he was on the yard selling kites? I, I was jigging May 10th out of day, and that was something like. All right, so we got BSC Ziggy off the porch with us today, man. It's the biggest. How you doing? I'm feeling great. How you feeling today, bro? I'm, I'm feeling it. Yeah. I'm feeling great. You know? I'm blessed to be here, blessed to be free, smelling this real air. Yeah. I'm just happy right now, man. I don't blame you, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't blame you, I'm man. happy. Yeah. I know you be coming out to Atlanta a lot, man. How do you like the vibes out here compared to back at home? Man, I love Atlanta vibes. All of them. The girls, the music. I love it all. I've been coming to Atlanta, though. Like, all my people stay up here. Okay. And my sisters and brothers stay up here, but I love Atlanta, though. Yeah. I'm talking about the greatest place ever. <laughs> this is where the real hustle come at. You can't come to Atlanta and don't make no money, man. Like, you don't need to be here. Like, sure. I love Atlanta, man. Real opportunity out here. Absolutely, man. That's how I ran to you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> real opportunity out here. <laughs> real On everything. Yeah, man. All right. But let's talk about Mobile, man. What's going on out there? What's life like, man? Man, Mobile actually, like, he like a New Orleans, Atlanta type of vibe, you know what I'm saying? But it's just very small, you know what I'm saying? Like 100,000, 200,000 people probably. But it's like super dangerous, just like anywhere else for real. But I love Mobile. But it's just we got a lot of bullshit going on right now down there, like a lot of shooting, a lot of, you know, average shit. But I love it, though. I love my hometown, but I got to get away from there. Yeah. I might come to Atlanta or something. Okay. Yeah, Mobile messed up. Laws, the police, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's different in Alabama than anywhere else for real down south. Like, they fucked up. Like, Mississippi, mm -hmm. Mobile, Birmingham, Montgomery, all them places in Alabama. Mm -hmm. We get it hard down there. Like, to get the crazy time for, like, the smallest cases, you yeah. know? And they don't care. And there's a lot of shooting going on down there. So, like, you got to get away from that when you're trying to elevate yourself in life. You know Absolutely, what I'm yeah. Right. So how would you describe your childhood? What were you into as a kid growing up there? Oh, I love all sports, you know, basketball, football. I played them all, baseball. I always loved women. Shit, fighting. I used to love to fight, too. You know what I'm saying? Tomville. I used to love to fight. Booger T. I went all my high school. I mean, all my, all my schools was in my neighborhood. My elementary, my middle school, my high school. I went to all of them. I walked. I always walked to school, so like, I just love being outside, you know what I'm saying? That shit changed now, you know? You don't see a lot of kids outside, they be on. Mm -hmm. but I love just coming up, like, man, that shit was fun. It was fun coming up, though. I love sports, that's it, for real, though. Yeah. Love going to school, too. That's yeah. why you see everybody there. I love school. Man, my mom went playing that, she whoop your ass, you come home. <laughs> you come home bad grade, my mom whoop your ass. She on your ass. I, I made good grades, you know what I'm saying? But after school, I'm on your ass. <laughs> I'm on your ass. Yeah, I used to love to fight though. Love sports and love fighting. That's it. That's all we had to do. When nothing else, we weren't working. You know, I hustled a little bit, but most of that team, we just getting into shit. Yeah. Team parties, fighting this neighborhood, this side. You know, we ain't had no blood, crips, and all that shit coming up. You know what I'm saying? But people still rep what they rep. But it was more neighborhood, this neighborhood, this neighborhood. But mm -hmm. I love Mobile though. Coming up, childhood fun. Keep it real, what was your record fighting wise, man? Oh, I honestly got jumped a lot. You know what I'm saying? I get on your ass by myself. Like, I got jumped a lot. I promise to God, you ask anybody, my, I ain't capping. Like, I, don't, I, ain't, I ain't lost too many one-on-one -on -one fights. You know, I had a childhood friend. We fought her every day, so I <laughs> lost with him. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't, I don't too much lose. I don't mind losing, though. I'm just gonna, when I catch your ass, though, it's gonna be some shit. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I, I get on your ass. So at what age would you say you jumped off the porch then? I've been off the porch. I think I was born on the street. But honestly, like, I want to say probably 11, 12 years old. But never 12. I ain't never do shit at 12. I don't fuck with 12. Skipped right to 13. So 11 right? or 13 years old. <laughs> yeah. 11 or 13, though, like, I've jumped out. I've been off the porch, though. It's like, I mean, to me, off the porch, like, I'm going through my neighborhood around 11, 12, 13 years old getting into shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, just it's a regular teenager. Yeah. But I was still selling whatever I can sell. That's what I call it. You don't got to be drugs or anything. I got goddamn candy, drinks, anything. I'm selling it. You know what I'm saying? So I always been hustling. 
I do your homework for your ass. You want me? <laughs> shit, I don't care. Yeah, you I'm mentioned you had good money. grades, yeah. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> they don't mean nothing. Being a gangster don't mean you, you know, slow. Yeah. Yeah. So did you have much guidance out there when you first jumped yeah. off? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, from other people in the neighborhood-wise or, like... Either family or anyone. I mean, yeah, everybody my family, like, basically was in the streets, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of my kin folks, like, right now, still locked up from when I was a child. But as far as guidance now, nah, like, we all was a teenagers, you know what I'm saying? We, like, four, five, six of us together, you know, me and my partners, and we just finding it out on our own, you know what I'm saying? Like, some, some other people gave some of the other groups game, and we, you know what I'm saying, we homeboys, so... We'll swap it out. Yeah. They'll tell us what he know, you know what I'm saying, put us on game. Yeah. But now, nah, not, not a lot of guys now. Nah. We figured out on our own. Yes, yes. Just like anybody else, for real. Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody trying to get your ass no game for real out there. Like, shit, man, this little nigga ain't from no so run past me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we figured it out on our own. But it's better like that, too, though, you know what I'm saying, sometimes. But I help somebody get on. Yeah. If I know something that benefits you and me, or just yourself, honestly, if I fuck with you, I put you on, I don't care what you make. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just want to see you do, elevate, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because even sometimes, especially when you're younger, man, you could tell someone something, but until they experience them themselves, they may not even listen to right. you. Right. They may right. not even believe what you say on them until they actually go through it. You got to go through it. You have to go through it. I mean, like, you have to, like, like they really can't give you no opinion on something if you never went through it, you know what I'm saying? You be like, you. Oh, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this, but you never went through it to tell me this. Now, if you go through it, I can hear you out. I can, under, like, yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I can't understand what you're saying if you ain't never went through this, what I went through, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let, let's talk about this case, man, where you got locked up. Was it 27 pounds of weed? Yeah, 20. Man, them people say all type of shit. They say 33 pounds, 27 pounds. I ain't gonna call it nothing. That's what I'm gonna say. But uh, but yeah, it's like I got my case ongoing. Like I got uh, I go to court next month in August. You're you know? still fighting this. Yeah, like after I beat my case on the, like the Supreme Court, mm-hmm. it's like a higher level than you know the county. You know what I'm saying? Or the state. If I go straight to Supreme Court, I beat it at Supreme Court. But when I appeal the case and I I got it reversed, the same day I got out, they recharged me with. The same case and How the more fuck cases. They do that? That's why I said, but I read it up though. It's like a fucked up law in Alabama that they, by law they can't. That's do Alabama it. law. Yeah. God. Damn. It may be everywhere, but I know in Alabama is is it's the law. Like they can recharge you, and try to find other evidence to stick you with this charge. I'm like, damn. The Supreme Court said that y'all ain't have. You know, y'all did shit the wrong way. Yeah. They like fuck the Supreme Court. We're gonna charge you anyway. Like, That's wild. Alabama do what they want to do. But I mean, I'm in, I'm in good favor though, you know? Yeah. I already got it beat, man. Like, Chase Dillman, my lawyer, man. Like, he's a good lawyer in Alabama. Shout out, Chase. I love you to death. Yeah, so the, initially they sentenced you to life. Yeah, I was serving prison. life. Serving life in prison. Man, I was serving weed. life for weed, man. So, first, let, let's just, what was your reaction when they handed down that sentence? I'm sure that blew you, man. Like, what like, the fuck? The night before. Like the night before I went to court, I mean the day before I went to court, my lawyer told me like, this is what I was facing anyway. He was like, but we're not gonna take nothing they offer us, you know, we, we gonna go all the way. Mm-hmm. So I, he was like, just trust me. If you get life, I'm gonna have you out in this mountain. So I said, shit, you talking about life? This is, this is my life, you talking about, I gotta go do this time, not you, right? So I'm like, fuck it. If we went to trial and I, you know what I'm saying, no losing. So they gave me a life sentence, but they gave me my right to appeal it. Mm-hmm. So, like, I did two and a half years on it in prison while they were fighting to get out, you know what I'm saying? This is my third time going to prison, though. True. But all the time was over, you know what I'm saying, over weed. Like, I don't like this some bullshit, for real, to me anyway. Because yeah. it's legal in other places in the legal Yeah, hills. which is like, wild, yeah. That's wild. But, uh, so I did two and a half years on that. But I went to prison, though, like, I'm in prison, like, I'm in this every day. Like, you see me on Instagram, I got a phone. Cause I'm one of them kind of people can have a phone. You don't play with me. But like, prison, like, you know what I'm saying? Like that shit, you know, it's fucked up. Like, but two and a half years and we, like anything could have happened to me, then y'all would end up like, just say if I would've got killed in there. Mm-hmm. 
and I end up beating the case. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how they, I'm like, that shit crazy. They really have you in here and not even knowing if you're going to win or come back home or not. But like, I'm really serving life. My papers say 99, the 99th month, the 99th day, year 99, 99. I say, I ain't never seen them numbers. Shit, 99, I ain't never seen that month. They don't even exist. I'm like, you tell me I never get that. It's like, you can make parole eventually, but like still, like you still got me serving life. Anything can happen in here to make me if I get in there and stab a dude, he end up dying. Now I'm in here for real, serving a life sentence. Yeah. Over some bullshit, it started from weed, you know what I'm saying? It's like a domino effect. And like they give, that, they got a lot of people gonna give up in prison. Like they give up, like I see it every day, they give up. I'm talking about, they be losing it. Before yeah. they start doing gay shit, shit they don't even wanna do, they just fuck life. Like no, not me. I made me some money in that motherfucker and, and, and got out of there yes. without, without telling. No rat shit, all my paperwork online, you Google me. Yeah. So where were you at mentally during those two and a half years? Were you confident that you were coming home? Man, or I did you just have to believe that you were coming home? Yeah, I, mean, I promise to go, I promise you, you can ask anybody in prison with me, they'll tell you. Man, I walked, every day I had a smile on my face. Like, like I'm like, this weed, like I know I'm not gonna do life over no weed, man. I'm like, man, they got people in here raping people, got seven years. Robert got 25 years, life, he probably got eight. I know people who got, I mean, a, a murder got eight years, five years and shit. I'm like, I know you ain't just give me no life sentence over no damn weed, no finna do it. Shit me. They wanted me to t take some time, man. I ain't want to take the time they offered me. So what, what, do you remember what they were offering you at first? Yeah, like a 20 year sentence split to serve five years. So I would have did five years anyway and still had to do five years on papers or something True. like that. And if I mess up in them five years on papers, I gotta you go gotta back up 20. to 20. Yeah. Like, no, that's crazy. Like, if you take a deal, you can't appeal it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you go all the way to court, you know what I'm saying? You get found guilty or you beat it. If you get found guilty, they give you your right to appeal your case. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'd rather have a chance than take this time be do it five years. So if I took that time, I would have did five years. You wouldn't be talking to me right now. Mm -hmm. I took, I did two and a half years. So shit, it worked out in my favor. Yeah. Like, I, in all ways, because I rap about all this shit and they, like, they know it's the truth. You know what I'm saying? You can't ignore me because it's really online. You can go read it yourself. Like, you read and comprehend what you read. Yeah. Like, but prison, it ain't really for, it ain't for nobody. Like, that's some inhumane, like, environment. Like, it's like a real jungle. Like, man, I done seen some shit, man. I done seen some shit in prison, man. Like, that shit is another jungle. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it's a jungle, yeah. but. You stay in your own lane, you know, people just, you know, everybody stay in their own lane. I don't hear nothing, see nothing, me and my business. I ain't finna talk about it, I walk right past it. You can be getting your ass stabbed to death. I'm gonna keep walking. I can't save you, I don't wanna get involved. <laughs> you ain't finna stab me trying to save you, hell no, nah, no sir. Yeah. I can't do it. I stayed to myself, made my money, chilled with everybody, played basketball. If you got in my way, I got on your ass accordingly. And, and the gang did too, shout out to the gang. And, and I came home, yeah. like, so, unscarred. Yeah, so what was your reaction when the lawyer hit you and was like, all right, you coming home now? Man, listen, I promised the God, they gave me a parole date. Just say Friday, it's a Friday, they gave me a parole date in the mail. My parole date said 2028. I still was like, fuck, this still like me doing 10 years on, a, on some weed, you know what I'm saying? So. I was mad that whole week. I'm like, everybody, they like, what's your parole? That's it, man, I don't want to talk to nobody, man. I don't want to talk. I'm mad as shit. Like, I don't want to talk about shit. Somebody doing 10 years for some weed before I can even come up for parole again. I was mad as hell. So like, the next Friday, I promise you, one of my other partners called me from prison. Kale called me from prison. And was like, hey, your lawyer said call you. So I called him. Boom. He say, the first thing he said, I swear to God, he said, we beat them motherfuckers, I told you. Them, I remember them same words, them exact words. He said, I beat them, we beat them motherfuckers, I told you. I, I couldn't even say it, and I was like, man, stop playing. He was like, I promise you. I said, stop playing with me, man, I'm coming home. He was like, yeah, you coming home. Man, I almost jumped through the prison. <laughs> I'm talking about, I wanted to just run straight through the bars, man, I was so happy. I was just, I mean, I'm talking about, instantly wanted to just start giving all my shit away. Y'all can have this shit, I don't care. I don't need this no more. Man, they took, 
45 days for me to get up. When I was mad, like them 45 days was the longest time my <laughs> I whole bed. I bet, because you just waiting to get home on. My whole two and a half years, them 45 days, I did them two and a half years. But that was the slowest time. I felt every hour. And it was so much, like in them last 45 days, it was so much bullshit, like coming. Like they started changing the prison, going from mm-hmm. level four to making it level five. They so was they, hoping you would fuck up, huh? Yeah, man, I'm talking about not them, but like, I feel like the devil was like, they're just trying to, man, it's just so many people that like, it was just so much bullshit going on the last like time I was like, man, I just, I barely made it out. I swear if I would've stayed probably two more weeks, I probably would've been there forever. And like, that shit was amazing, man. They, they, they brought me home. I ain't even give a damn about them charging me again. I said, I got a bun. They like, yeah, I like fucking charge. Let me come on, come on, here you go, I'm gone. Man, I went crazy. I've been running that shit up since I touched down. <laughs> I've been out a year. Yeah. Okay. Man, I've been out a year. So did most of the people on the outside, did they stick with you? Did they support you? Or did some of them give up? Like, man, he ain't never coming out. He got man, life. I don't even lie. A lot of, hell yeah, a lot of them, like, I ain't gonna say I don't blame them because I wouldn't do no shit like them, like that. But them as a person, I don't, you know, I don't know how people built. So to them, I don't know. It's like, you just fade away sometimes, like you away. Sometimes, I guess I faded away from some people. Some people gave up on me soon as soon as I hit. Like, I'm talking about some close people to me, all type of, you know, I ain't gonna get personal with that, but like some of the closest people I ever, family members, you know what I'm saying? Like, that shit crazy. Like, a life sentence, they, they give up on your ass for two years. They see your ass got a life sentence, oh, he ain't never coming out. The same niggas like, you know what I'm saying? Like the same people who rooting for me now. You know what I'm saying? I know, I seen like, you know, I got a phone the whole time. I don't know what people think. I'm like, I'm like, I'm looking at this shit. Like, I see people sneak this and like all oh, this type of shit. Like he ain't never coming home. Or if they girl want to talk to me, I see screenshots, all type of shit. Like they ain't want me to come home for real, man. Like, and I did it the right way. You, you supposed to be made at a rat. You supposed to congratulate somebody doing something. They don't do me like that. So I know, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of hate. They hate what's really real. Like if you can't, if you don't have nothing to talk about about that person, they're gonna be like, you gotta hate him. Like, damn, I can't say this shit. I can't say he gay. I can't say he broke. I can't say goddamn he told. I can't say he a rat. I can't say shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just hate me in my city anyway. But other places, like they see my story, they congratulate. They be like, man, that shit real. Like you ain't tell at all, period. I ain't think about telling. They know take me straight to jail. I remember Task Force told me, they pulled me over one time. Task Force told the other Task, he trying to talk, revving my rights, then gonna say, oh, now you know if you tell us something, we can. The other Task Force member was like, hey man, don't even talk to him. He ain't even finna say nothing. Like, <laughs> they, they already, already know. know. Like, man, what? Come on, man, I got a real lawyer. And I ain't, what the fuck I'm talking to y'all for? Y'all can't give me no time. See, that's what they get scared about. The police telling you he gonna get you 20 years. He it's not the, up to him. It's not up to him. Crazy. They, oh shit, oh, Johnny from up the street. Oh, man, come on, man. Take that shit. That's their game. That's the game, man. That's why they conviction rate high because they scare y'all and make y'all take some time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? They scared me back when I first got my first two. I was like, no, hell no, I ain't scared no more. I know. You know what I'm saying? But I had to go through it. Yeah. Like we were talking about earlier, I had to go through it to know that, no, I'm not taking no time. That nigga, I mean, that motherfucker told on me, tell him, come. I got to see him. Tell him, come in the court and tell on me. Nine times out of ten, they'll bag up. That's why they keep on trying to offer you some time because he even got scared. Now he like, shit. What if he see my face and tell everybody? You know what I'm saying? People are scared of social media. All I gotta do is say he told everybody in the world no nothing. Oh yeah. You can't go nowhere. No. <laughs> so like, that's basically what it is though. Like, yeah. it's wild that you gotta fight this shit all over again though. Yeah, it's finna be over. At least you're home to fight it. Yeah, hell yeah, it's better home. That's a big home. difference, it's I'm sure. It's better home. I can swing more. I was swing with one hand first. <laughs> they had me fucked up. Now I got both on right now. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. All right, so going to the music, did you focus on music as soon as you came home? Was this your plan? Like, hey, if I get out, I'm going to focus on something more positive. Yeah, like, like I fuck with the music, though. It's like, it's hard when you're doing that shit, like, by yourself or trying to build a team, like, then it's harder for me because I'm a person like I didn't lost so much loyalty, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with my situation to it's like I, I don't know who to trust. So I come up here by myself. You know, I don't I don't know. Like like I don't know, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just starting to build my team, like smile, smile, but like the rap was the first thing I came to, like Rollo my partner, let my partner. Like I got a lot of homeboys and like people that's in the industry, you know what I'm saying? Like Yavo, like I fuck with all them little soldiers. 
Like yeah. all the Alabama rappers, we and fuck. And they all fuck with you. Heavy oh, they too. love me. They love me because they know even through their cities, they can ask the people from their city that's in prison about me. They even say what's real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Whatever happening now is like, I'm, I'm stamped. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't no hoe. I ain't the hardest person in the world, but like, you know, I'm a stand up person. Yes, yeah, sir. All right, but like the rap, I love the rap though. This shit, this shit hard. I love all this shit. I ain't gonna even lie. Like, it's something positive to do better than out here getting shot at or shooting at somebody, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, unless I have to now, I smoke your ass, but I don't, I don't want to, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we chilling, we trying to get some money right now. It's like these different times right now. Yeah, real like, shit, yeah. There's a lot of opportunity out here yeah, through we, the music, man. Sh- man, people have opportunity, they get their money and go straight back to beefing with each other. Yeah. That was never the goal, to kill each other anyway. Yeah. All right, so you just dropped the new project, man, The Appeal. Oh, yeah. I think the title speaks for itself yeah. on that one. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, so what type of emotions did you go through while recording this project, man? And how personal did you get in on this? Um, like, I got, I ain't really get too personal in it. Like, like the time I'm making, I'm just so, I'm just so, so hyped to be at, you know what I'm saying? So most of my, my songs, more up-tempo type of songs, but I'm speaking some real shit, it's more like, me like talking like aggressive on some shit like like, like this how I feel right now. Like you can't tell me shit, man. I just be the life sentence, man. Like and and it's, and I can prove it. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people say they can do this, do this, but they don't have proof. Like I can really prove it. You know what I'm saying? So in the streets, it means something to us. You know what I'm saying? So like the appeal, like that bitch jumping, man. I don't even gonna lie. I only got two two features on there, Yavo and uh, Rallo, mm-hmm. but like. I'm riding it. Like, I gave myself a 10 for 10. I was like, I got 100 some songs. If I can't pick 10 songs out of these songs, <laughs> shit, I don't need to be rapping. And like, I ain't gonna even lie, like, I ain't gonna say I was nervous. I mean, I, I wasn't scared, but I was kind of nervous to drop it. I'm like, damn, like, what type of reviews I'm gonna get on my shit like that. But like, my, my people just like, just drop, bro. Just put some music out. Yeah. And like, I put that shit out, that shit did. Man, I don't even lie, I think I got, I ain't got mm-hmm. nothing but that one tape on there, so that shit say like, 200 some thousand views. That's major right there. But by myself, I don't, you know, by myself, through Distro Kid. I fuck with Distro Kid. <laughs> I fuck with They're Distro Kid. They're cutting them kid. checks now. Oh, yeah, yeah. They need to pay me quick. Yeah. I need to get more views than that, but <laughs> run, go run that tape up. The appeal, you gotta get that. Like, yeah. But I done dropped some, some, some videos out there too. Like, I'm, I'm finna shoot a video when I leave here. Right now, I promise you. Which one you shooting? I don't know yet. He said, I don't know yet. Director. <laughs> I don't know something. Off me or, I don't know. I got some more shit I might not even shoot that's off the tape. You okay. know what I'm saying? I got a remix to a song called Adidas Man on there, but I ain't told nobody who on there yet. Hmm. But he from our city too, though, so. Okay. So how far back does the relationship with Rollo go? Did you know him before he got locked up? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Like, Rollo, my, you know what I'm saying? We, my neighborhood home, but like he from the hood. Like me and his old brother MC used to, well, we hang together, you know what I'm saying? Shout out MC. But he from Tumbleville, our same neighborhood, Rawls Williams. That's okay. close to our neighborhood, but that's the project where he from. But I'm from Tumbleville. But all that's on the north side of Mobile. But I've been on Rollo for, man, I don't know that man since he was 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Okay. Yeah, I've been on Rollo. Yeah. I know everybody neighborhood. He a project baby. He bad head like all them niggas. He's probably <laughs> breaking your house, steal your goddamn clothes and TVs and shit. But yeah, he's still the same person to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, to everybody for real. Like, I fuck with him. Like, he do what he can do for you if he can. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I fuck with Rollo though. Yeah, forever. That's my brother, and he the hardest at. Yeah, I was gonna say how inspiring is it to see man, him. Man, listen, he hard. Like when I left, you know what I'm saying? Like when I left. Like, this, I left him with this chain right here. Yeah. Like, that nigga got some in chain there. And he leave me with about two, three of them motherfuckers. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I left him with this because, like, I don't know, like, that's my real little brother, man. Like, and to see that shit is, like, overnight for real. Like, I'll go to sleep two years, wake up, boom, you here. Man, I'm seeing him signing shit in the jet. I'm on my phone. I'm on the phone on my rack looking at him on the jet with all this shit like this, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? My city, like, with baby, man, I'm like, man, that shit the hardest shit ever, man. Like, that shit hard. Like, that shit make me smile every time. That shit bring joy to me, you know what I'm saying? That's my real partner. Yeah. 
Like to see somebody make it, like damn, that shit hard. Kid out of here, man. He the hardest. Yeah. That motherfucker like Prince. That yeah, motherfucker like miss, Prince. Man. His punchline. Yeah. Him and Cap it. too, man. No yeah. Cap, bro. I love them too. That, that's my like, bro. That boy hard. Yeah. Free Cap. Yeah. He finna get out soon. Now, what about Yevo? How long have you been knowing him? Did you meet him just through the music? Yeah, I uh, I met him through music when I first got out. And we had did a uh, song together. And like he had already uh, said he had heard some of my shit before I went with my other homeboy, Chop, Big Chop. So like we did that song, we been rocking ever since. Like, bro, like I'm super close to bro. Like I hit him up down there at least once a week I got to. Like he all, we, we talking shit to each other, we drinking or whatever, like, but like he gonna push you too. You know what I'm saying? He'll post your shit. Like simple shit, like we all smile, connected. They got a bigger platform, but they all help me, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody wanna see me win. Yeah. Like that shit big too. Now I ain't gonna say everybody hating, but they wanna see me win, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause they hear that shit, they were like, bro, you talking that shit, bro. The people gotta hear this shit. And I know if they like my shit, I know they'll like your shit and type shit, you know what I'm saying? So like they doing what the right thing they supposed to do. Like he being real, like I love Yabo. You can't play with him. I gotta go. I gotta put that shit on. That's genuine right there, man. Yeah, hell yeah. And they younger than me too, you know what I'm saying? But that shit's still real. Like they like, bro, you gotta be heard, bro. You got a real story. And I'm telling the story the right way too. I ain't even got a story just talking like I can't rap on no bullshit. Like I'm I can rap this shit too, man. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you, I told Gucci Mane he come get me. Sign somebody crazy like me, like you, motherfucker. <laughs> like him, yeah, for real. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, so one of my favorites on the tape is that Byron left, which, man. Oh, that sample. That shit hard, man. That sample, man. That uh, uh, KP and Envy, I think that's their name. Shout out them. That's the song. That's why I got that. Shout out swing like yeah. That shit right there. But yeah, that's my shit. Man, I heard that beat. Like Max, uh, Max Payne, he made the beat. Shout out Max Payne, he made the beat. But I already heard, you know what I'm saying, the sample in my head. So I'm like, damn, boy, I'm gonna put this sample in there, see if that shit sound. So my, uh, one of my producers, engineers, I mean, uh, Trev, Trev say, slow that bitch down. And I like, no, he like, speed it up. <laughs> so he sped it up, man. That shit sounded so good. I ain't, the rest of the shit is just history, cause I was like, man, this shit too easy. Like the beat made me just, just flow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love that song. Yeah. She can fuck who she want to fuck. Nigga, that ain't your wife. Shout it swing my way, yeah, that shit. Yeah, I shoot a video for that one, man. I already shot a video for that. Oh, you did? Yeah. See, man, I got to do my research, man. I got to do my research. that one. <laughs> it's already out. Okay. I'm just talking. Yeah, it's already out, though. Byron Left Witch. Please run that up. That's one of the hardest songs on there, too. For sure. That's a fan favorite for real. Yeah. Like, they love that. I got to perform that at my next show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's next for you, Ziggy? What else you working on, man, besides fighting this case, man? I'm just keep rapping, man. Like, keep staying in Atlanta. Every time I come to Atlanta, something good happens. Like, there's a lot of connections out here. And, you know, I love to rap. That's what I'm doing right now. Every day, I'm trying to do something. Wake up thinking about a rap, write a little something down. Might go watch an interview. I'm watching, I'm doing something pertaining to rap though. Like, for real. And I got two shows coming up, but like, I had just not got linked in with me and my manager named Ray. You know what I'm saying, tax free Ray. Like he just been helping me like just answer phone calls or just reaching out, getting me booked and doing that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, he's getting picked up and we just started probably three, four weeks ago. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I got an album release party next month on the August 14th in, in Mobile. But, like, it's going to go up, I promise you. Like, they already talking about it. Like, I'm trying to tell you that bitch going to be decked out. I might like, bring this porch in there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. we can work something out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, just straight music, straight grinding, man. Straight grinding, whatever, man. We can get some merch in, man. Sell my merch. Just grind the rest of the year. Grinding shit up, trying to stay out of the streets, trying to stay focused on something besides my case. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I feel that. Cause God gonna take care of my case anyway. I'm good. I, I beat that shit. Yeah. If not, he'd be interviewing me from now too. <laughs> shit ain't nothing. Look at it. It's, I'm humble. Yeah. I'm a happy person, man. I ain't tripping. 
You want to give it a shout out, Ziggy, before we wrap it up, man? Oh, uh, shout out God, shout out my mother, shout out my family, man, shout out the whole Tumbleville, free all the guys, man. I love y'all. Shout out DGB for having me here, man, off the porch, man. Shout out the game. Well, shout out everybody. <laughs> shout out to the weed, man. That's it. How he hop off Delta flight when he was on the yard selling kites? I was jigging, made 10,000 a day, and that was something like. Oh, boy, Martin Grove, oh my.